So usually the formation work will be done with the help of locally available material. Sometimes the what the material is available that will be poor in nature, which is undesirable for the construction as a form, construction of the formation work. In such cases, we have to remove those soil and bring um, borrow the some good material so that the strength of the formation can be improved. But if you replace the entire soil which is poor, so what will happen? The cost of construction is will increase very much. The next option would be the stabilization of the poor soil and make use of the locally available material. So now the process of improving the strength of the soil and the nature of soil using the suitable methods that we call it as the stabilization of track on the poor soil. So some of the methods that will be used to stabilize your poor soil is layer of murum, cement grounding, sand piles and the use of chemicals. So now in the first method a layer so usually the soil when if you feel that the soil is poor in nature and it cannot be strong enough to take your track component what we have to do is on the form on the natural soil we have to place a layer of murum soil so and this need to be prepared for the required level and need to be comp properly compacted and consolidated so that it will gain the higher strength so once this uh, for murum formation is ready then your the uh, formation will be ready to take the further track component so this method is especially suitable in case of when whenever you have the black cotton soil so in the black cotton soil is present it is we all know the what is the property of the black cotton soil when it absorbs the moisture it swells and upon removal of expelling the water it gets shrinks so that volume changes will be the 20 to 30 percentage of the uh, volume the change in moisture content so usually when you provide this murum layer you can avoid the uh, unnecessary volume changes in the track component so when the murum layer is provided the thickness of the layer varies between the 300 to 600 mm and with the help of the murum layer the pressure can be distributed evenly and it also prevents the sinking a formation of the cracks on the soil layer and the sinking of ballast into the soil layer so instead of murum we can also use ashes rubble slabs of concrete can also be used as a soil layer and the next method is the cement grouting so here we are not using any additional soil so we are trying to stabilize the existing soil only with the help of in, in cement grouting so what is this grouting cement grouting is nothing but we will have a mortar which is of a proper proportion that will depends upon the uh, nature of the poor soil the proportion will depend upon that so this mortar will be ingressed inside the soil under certain pressure so doing your concreting work under the pressure that we call it as the cement grouting so now what we have to do is in the formation first the we have to drive the steel tubes the steel tube should have a diameter of 30 mm and 1.5 meter long that will be driven into the formation so usually the where the place where the steel tube has to be driven that that is shown here in the picture so usually at the sides so a little away from the sleepers that steel tube has to be inserted and when you insert this steel tube that should not be inserted vertically instead it will be driven at certain angle such that the bottom of the steel tube will be below the rail position of the rails so now once the steel tube is inserted within the steel tube we have to push your motor under the pressure the motor will be forced into the steel tube under the pressure so the pressure maintained will be the 0.7 newton per mm square once the cement get hardened so the steel tube will be taken out so now with the help the cement grout will be within the uh, soil and that will improve the strength of the soil and the last next method we have is these sand piles 
So sand pile is somewhat similar to the inter, uh, cement grouting method. So here we don't use the cement mortar. Instead of that, the sand will use as a reinforcing material. And how it will be done? So similar to the cement ground, we will have to drive up piles. So which is having a diameter of 300 mm and 6 inches long. So these will be of usually the wooden piles. These wooden piles will be inserted in the formation. So how what are the position where you have to insert the wooden pile is shown here in the pictures. So one is beyond your rail section on the place where the rail has to be taken and um, also the in between the two, two rails the two sand piles has to be driven. So make a hole with the help of the wooden piles and then once the hole is made remove your pile and fill that gap with the help of sand. And once it is filled that has to be properly rammed with the help of rammer and that will improve the strength of the, it will improve both mechan good provide the good mechanical strength to the soil and the last method is the use of chemicals so the sometimes we can mix some of the chemicals with the soils to improve the stability of the soil instead of using the cement grout to consolidate the soil so most popularly silicate soda for followed by the calcium chloride it act as the effective um, admixture in stabilizing this soil so that will be particularly used in the sandy soil which is containing the less than 25 percentage of the silt sand clay so these or the with these methods we can improve the strength and stability of the locally available soil and you can reduce the cost of Earthwork. So with this, I will conclude this session, and the next session we will be will discuss on the plate laying method in the railway track construction. Thank you, everyone.